This platform discusses any and all information that has been made known to the public in any way. If the information creates convo that needs to be had, then it could become a feature story on LRL platform. I'm not a journalist. I am a common darn taker. The information is alleged, but the commentary is real. Hit like right now and share because what you're going to hear here, you cannot hear nowhere else because we talked to Denise Clark Bradford first. And we're going to tell a story on tonight and review this here movie. Let's go. Welcome everybody to Larry Reed Live. I need you to hit like right now and share and let everybody know that we are on to have the discussion concerning the Clark Sisters movie. And that's what I'm calling it. I don't want to see y'all call it nothing else. I know what Lifetime said, but we know better. Because they called this here movie. The first ladies of gospel music, and I am from North Carolina, and I know better that the first lady of gospel music is Shirley Caesar. Shirley Caesar. Shirley Caesar. Shirley Caesar. We've been calling her that for umpteen years, 159,000 years. How all of a sudden? See, this is how come you need to let church folk, commentators, and the bloggers, and all the people that's been doing gospel radio like I have done, and gospel artists to be involved when it comes to this kind of going on. Because we know that the first lady of gospel news is Shana Caesar. Y'all done took a title. Now, we love the Clark sisters, but you're not going to do Shirley like that. You're not going to do Shirley like that. Lifetime, you're not going to do Shirley like that. It's probably why y'all took me off the live thing that I supposed to have been on today, but we're going to talk about that. I ain't going to hold that against you, Lifetime, because I understand somebody else probably behind that to feel like that I caused a whole lot of trouble with the Clark sister family, but I didn't. I just doing my job. It's y'all that caused the problem. All right, anyway, welcome to Larry Live. Um, we come on Mondays at 7 o'clock. This may be your first time tuning in, but you don't need to make it your last. So what you need to do, either sign up to be a Patreon or you need to text Larry Live No Spaces to 33222 so that you will always know before I go live. Hit subscribe over there if you're watching on YouTube. If you're here on Facebook, make sure you hover over that like that says see first so you make sure you don't miss nothing that we talk about here on this platform. Hello, Periscope. That's our storefront church. They probably ain't a bit, probably 200 folks in over there right now. But we already, right now, the mega church, which is Facebook, we already had like 2,600 people that's watching. And I think YouTube right behind you with 1,500, but YouTube, we know, going to be an outdo y'all tonight. But we're going to have the Commodore session on tonight. Hit like and share. The lines are already open. So let me go ahead and give you this phone number. But this thing. When I open up these lines for y'all to react to this Clark Sister movie review and some stuff I'm going to say, and we're going to let you hear straight out of the mouth of Denise, the missing Clark Sister, the fifth sister, but she called herself the first Clark Sister, and we're going to understand why by the end of this show, why she said that. Make sure you write down this number, 646-787-8174. That's 646-787-8174. Go ahead and get in queue because we don't know when the line going to crash. You know that happens sometimes, but you got to tell me your name, where you're calling from. Spit out in one minute what you want to say. It may be a question. Now, why is there a little Larry live and a big Larry live? Somebody tell me. Um, let me hold on for a minute. Lifetime, I know I made y'all upset in the day y'all took me off the thing with Michelle Williams, but um, can y'all send some a helper out of, I need a helper out of that can help click these buttons. 
so that they're not screwing up stuff when I'm trying to do the show. It's set up for another right. shot. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. It's all right. But goodbye. We good now. Are we what? We good. We are what? We are. We're good. good. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. All right. So you can keep your job. All right. So this is what we are going to do. I'm just going to talk to y'all concerning this movie. I'm going to go from the top to the bottom. First off, let us say that this was, I told y'all, didn't I tell you? Did y'all watch, when I told y'all to watch the movie, this here movie right here was good. And I told y'all it was one of the best lifetime biopics I have ever seen before. The Clark Sisters, the gospel. I ain't saying that. That just ain't coming out of my mouth. From North Carolina, I know better. I don't know who even came up with that title. But in a darn way, it was good. It was a line, but it was good. <laughs> it was good. I, it was half, let me say why I say it's line, because half the story, but um, it was good. It had a little mess, a little ministry. <laughs> Don't see when Twinkie, a.k.a. Christina Bell, and let me tell you, this is so, uh, God and them is so interesting to me. We know Christina Bell from Zyl, the four, the five member group that broke up. Count, how many you see? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, Christina was right at home, right where she belonged. Because the group broke up. Mm -hmm. But when you saw Twinkie, a.k.a. Christina Bell, grab a June What's how you say now? A June a June, I say a June A. Ellis, aka a, a, aka Maddie Moss, when she grabbed her and she said, Don't leave me. That scene, anybody that got, mama, got a mama, is a mama, had a mama, had to leave home, that scene got all the way down in your emotionals. My emotionals was touched. I didn't cry, but I know had I been somebody else, I probably would have. So I just want to see how many, just raise your hand in the chat so I can see how many of you all really cried in that scene. If you have not seen the movie, I forgot to give the disclaimer. Do not watch this. Come back and watch it later because I'm going to spoil it for you. I'm going over some, actually, some actual scenes. The movie starts off messy. <laughs> it starts off messy. <laughs> Now, let me tell you why it was messy for L.R. Ellers. Because a year ago, and some change, out of the ashes rises this woman. Her name is Denise Clark Bradford. Now, in the movie, she was portrayed much blacker, way blacker than she is. I don't know who had anything to do. I guess because maybe they were playing into the whole she's the black sheep of the family, so they made her black as possible, blacker than everybody else that was on the cast. And they chose uh, Ravel, Raven. Raven Goodwin to play her part, and she did really well. I think she did. In fact, all of the actors were very good. They played their part well. So about a year ago, this lady pops up on this obscure Facebook page. It was somebody who don't have a whole lot of following, who's not that active. And it was a video of her saying, now mind you, we hadn't heard from her in 40 years or more. Some people, most of the new Clark sister fans, they didn't know she existed. They thought the Clark sister was four people, Twanky, Dodo, Karen, Jackie. This is the video that popped up that shook the entire world. Kendall. You don't make the show professional. You ask me, is it that one? Is it that one? This is the one I told you to download. Click it and play it.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry. That's the wrong video. That's that's not the video that he was supposed to send the, uh, to tell y'all about. I did send you the video. Look at your email. I'm positive. Go to the email. Hold on, we got to get this video. Go to, scroll down. Scroll down where it says Denise speaks out. That's the one I downloaded. Click, click it. That's the one I already have in No, that ain't yeah. the right one. Don't you see it right there? It says 218 Denise speaks okay. out. Okay. No, that's not the right one. <laughs> All right, y'all hold on for a minute. You just need to be saying you sorry while you do that. Uh, I ain't saying I'm sorry, you niggas. I what you talking about? I ain't saying I'm sorry, nothing. I ain't saying I'm sorry, nothing. Hold on, Natasha, that might be the right one. Hold on for a minute. Is it? Yep, it is. That's All right, he was right. So let's let's watch this. <laughs> Here we go. Everybody. And welcome to the very first time I've ever done Facebook Live. I came to Detroit to particularly see my sister Twinkie. And I'm asking and soliciting prayers on her behalf as well as mine. I have some concerns. And my concerns took me, brought me all the way from the west coast of California to the east coast here in Detroit, Michigan. This is live. And I went to go visit my sister and wasn't allowed. Something's wrong with that. So I'm asking for all of you guys who have been interested in her phone was cut off, so I couldn't get in touch with her. I uh, understand her keys were taken, so she couldn't drive. And yet, she was asking for me. So, if by any means necessary, your prayers work, I ask in the name of Jesus that you allow yourself to please the blood of Jesus and that the walls of the enemy that are trying to be a barrier be pulled down. Those strongholds are coming down. He's bruised under our feet, and we do have victory because we are more than conquerors. God bless, love you much, and you'll be seeing more of me. But right now, I want you to also pray for my grandkids, wherever they are. Take care, and until next time, I love you. God bless. When I put this clip up, it went viral. Over a million people saw this video from Denise. And of course, you see in that, I didn't even know this was that video. That is actually the moment when me and Auntie Dodo no longer had any communication because she got mad with me because I put her text out. Now, let me say this. I apologize to her 
I apologize to my audience. I was very new in getting, I won't really say I really became pro at what I do really until this year. It was a whole lot of learning from 2016, 2019. And so I realized at that moment, okay, you should have gotten permission from her first and all that kind of going on. And that's absolutely true. But I also think it played into the fact that what Denise said, it sort of went with the narrative of what she said. She said that the family was very secretive and did not want things to be known. So they will lie to the public and we will believe whatever they say and their truth be something else. Now, it's so funny that this is coming up now because we just experienced that with the Winans family that is there in Detroit with them right now. So this is a pattern that we see. And you know, the Winans and the Clarks grew up together. And I understand it. When you are in that type of position and your truth or something that you do not want to be known gets out, and you decide to lie about it. I'm not saying it's morally right. I'm not saying biblically it is right as a Christian, but I do understand it. And if you want to lie about it, fine, lie about it. <clears throat> now, that's what it is. Celebrities do it all the darn time. Now, the only problem I have with the whinings is that they lied and tried to throw me up under the bus for talking about it when, when after it got out online. Since I was the biggest platform, they were trying to throw me up under the bus, um, particularly the general manager, which I ain't, still ain't figured it out how a church got a general manager like it's a Dollar Tree. But anyway, so it is what it is. So sh the video was put out and eventually me and her was able to talk. And when we were able to talk, what she began to share. Now, we talked privately and she shared openly. I wasn't going to tell anybody. <clears throat> I kept it to myself. But then she said, we're going to do an interview. I want her to do an interview. I asked her for the interview. She done an interview that turned into a four part interview. Now, the fourth interview is nowhere online. I'm the only one that have it. After I finish here tonight, I'm going to upload it on the platform as a premiere. And you guys can discuss that. Um, it's just it's like an hour and 40 minutes of nothing but her and I talking back and forward. There's no preliminary. I just cut it to the interview. So <clears throat> the first interview shook all of the church. <laughs> The second interview shook all of the church. The third interview, shook because she began to empty and pour out concerning, you know, 40 or 50 years of information that we never knew. Now, in the movie tonight, I did hear some of the things that we heard from Denise Clark Bradford. As we are talking about this movie, and like I said, the movie started out very messy, you know, and I'm using that word loosely. Now, this the thing. In that interview, we found out that, well, a lot of you found out, a lot of us found out, leave this here, in the movie, the first part of the movie, we found out, we heard something in this movie that we found out when we talked to Denise. And this is what Denise said. One of the main things that she said that she had a problem with her sister's concern and because this is... I mean, she cleared so much up because we thought that she was kicked out of the group because she got pregnant. In the movie, we saw that she had three babies and then she left. I'm not sure how true that is. And if my memory serves me correct, that may be what Denise told us in the interview because the first son she had a way lot was Larry. Now, the thing I did not like about her storyline, I'm going to tell you in just a minute. So the first thing we saw in the movie is her and Jackie getting into an argument. Denise told us in the interview that her and Jackie bumped heads. And she said in the interview, and we heard this in the movie, Jackie, why are you always trying to boss and tell for what to do? And Denise, out of all the sisters, seemed to be the only one that the control aspect that Maddie had over the girls that Jackie operates in over the whole family it didn't work with Denise. She didn't have that kind of personality type. So Denise was like, girl, you you a column. <laughs> because in the interview, if you saw the interview, you heard Denise say this. Now, to many of you, like, oh, my God, Jackie is not a Clark. Well, she's a part. She is a Clark sister. Definitely. The brand and the group, the Clark sister, Jackie, has been in it from the beginning. You cannot have the Clark sisters without Jackie Clark. Let me repeat. 
You cannot have the Clark sisters without Jackie Clark. I'm going to repeat. One. What you say? Jackie Clark or Jackie Clark? Let me say what I said. You cannot have. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to come bring it back around. You cannot have the Clark sisters without Jackie Clark. That is the stage name. Now, when it comes to the Clark family, meaning Matty, Albert, R.I.P. Can we say rest in peace? They made like, and this movie making like he was a woman beater. But anyway, and the daughter. So you got Leo and Jackie, who is from Matty's first marriage. Now, let me explain. Their last name is Cullum. Now, here's a picture of Leo and Maddie together. And I had to get permission from Leo by way of Denise to put this picture up. He looks more like her to me than any of the children. And he is the oldest sibling, Leo Clark. Then it then comes Jackie Clark. So Z Jackie Clark and Leo are Cullums. Now, according to Denise... Jackie <coughs> never took on her daddy's name legally. So this is the reason why on her LPN license, she's a nurse. She's a licensed practical nurse. This is the reason why it says Cullum and not Clark, because according to Denise, she's not authentically a Clark, but she is very much so a part of the Clark sisters. And Jackie has a bossy, strong, um, flippant type of approach. We see this in the recent video she done with YouTuber Terrell. We see it in, the, in any interview she recently did on over the past week. We see it in any interview, in interview that she done over the years. Jackie has that type of flippant, motherly, quick, tell you what to do type of personality. And Denise, from what we see, she has the very same kind of personality. You are not going to be able to tell Denise what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. And she likes things the way that she wants to do them. So when this video got released and she's talking about, I can't see Twinkie, they won't let me see Twinkie. So we begin to see the dynamic then that there was a problem between Denise and the rest of the sisters. And I want to go on record saying this, that this is not a Denise problem. This is not a Clark sister, the rest of the Clark sister problem. This is a family issue. And I don't put any blame, me, on any one sister more than the other. I want you to, in this movie, okay, it starts off with, you can leave it there. It starts off with Jackie and Denise sort of going at it. And we see Maddie being ambitious, trying to, trying to train her children and using them for her vision that she has to create and make music. And in doing that, it disrupted the marriage between her and Albert, and she began to get abused. Maddie began to get abused. Maddie then in turn, now, hold a minute. Albert, according to the movie, was abusive towards Jackie. Now, according to Denise, Jackie never liked her, her father, what Denise called him. Now, if you ain't seen part one, two, and three after I get off, I'm going to run part four, but then you have to go back and watch one, two, and three because ain't now one, none of them are the same. She said Jackie does not like her father. Now, in this movie that, in my opinion, is really told from Jackie's viewpoint to and a, a great hurrah and hooray and congratulations to Maddie Moss Clark, it, it shows why Jackie possibly, according to Denise, didn't like her father because she was not his child out of everybody that was in the house. So, Albert allegedly abused Maddie. Maddie then turned around and abused her children. That's just what it is. I'm going to say it again. Y'all not going to like it. Let me go ahead and get me something to drink because I know all the terrible emails are going to come, all the threats, and I might have to call my lawyer. In my opinion, 
it looked like to me that Maddie was abused by men. We're going to say Albert because I don't know the first husband. And then she turned around and she abused her children. Now, what good came out of it? The Clark sisters. But she abused them just like Joe Jackson did. And it is what it is. If truth be told, a whole lot of us been abused by, abused by our parents and the church mothers. That's just the way that they did. They were slaves. You keep going back to slavery, slavery. So a lot of that abuse passed down. But we, some of us call it holiness. Some of us call, call it sanctification. But it's abuse. It has psychological repercussions. And we see this in their relationship and possibly even with the relationship of their mental wellness. Because Twinkie had a nervous breakdown. Quiet as it's kept, allegedly. Karen had a mental breakdown. And Dorenda, we saw in the movie, she was going to kill herself and drive her car off the bridge, according to her first CD. And we see it in the movie here. When she, remember, because she made that statement, it was, a, it was a blooper, when she said that they were going to have to cut her out of the car with the life of Jaws versus a proposal to Jaws of Life. <laughs> you know, we all watched that and we saw that. So it was very good that this movie showed these aspects. But... I don't like the way that they, to me, Denise looked like a whore in the movie. To me, Denise was as if she was a whore that was disobedient, who did not want to live what she preached. Because her mama even said that in the, in the script. You're not living what you're preaching. I don't know who Denise was years ago, but the woman that I know now is a holy, sanctified woman of God who is like a church mother. I mean, you get on the phone. Hey, Denise, how you doing? Hi, Larry. How are you? I'm doing good. God is good. Let's go. Oh, hallelujah. He's good. I mean, you got going to a complete devotional service. Hallelujah, he's good. I say, he's good. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Pray, Larry. Pray, Larry, begin to pray. I said, Father God. Oh, this is Denise. And then she's doing, let me pray for you. God, just bless him. I mean, good prayers. Not no little. I mean, she can pray. I don't know the whore Denise want to party. I don't, I don't know. And I think that is perspective. I think that's likely the perspective that came from Jackie. Not saying... Anything negative is just what I think. Um, listen to the way that she talked and what she say to different people and watching interviews, and I don't know her. I can see her saying, oh, Lord, she was a whole mess. You know, oh, yes, and she she probably got something more in her mind, which they said that in the movie as well. And then Dorinda spoke and said, maybe there's something wrong with all of us. Because all of them went through. And Twinkie is tired. Can somebody let Twinkie go to sleep? This girl been working for years. I got tired looking at her run church to church to church, suitcase up and down the stairs, place to place. Jesus laughed. <clears throat> Let me tell you what was funny in the movie. That first scene when she said, um, the girl, the chewing girl, she said, yeah, might. Yeah, might. <laughs> you might be able to sing. Oh, that was hilarious to me. There were so many one-liners from Maddie in the movie. It was good that you might. And then another one, she said, you thought wrong. When she said, what are you doing? You're singing the cat? She said, mommy. Dorinda said, mommy, I thought I was singing good. You know, they acted like slaves to Maddie. This is, see, I couldn't see nothing but a, a, the abuse, the abuse aspect. And I know that this is a movie, but they did talk to the sisters to get this movie right. And it had to be approved by them. So they approved all this. And thought it was okay. In my mind, it's not okay. <laughs> this is abuse. Mommy, I thought that it was okay. You thought wrong. So the you might and the you thought wrong. <laughs> and uh, when, she, when she came to the door and uh, Jackie came to the door with trousers on, paints on. And then she had to go and change into a skirt and come back to the door. And her mom said, Mommy, everybody wearing She said, I don't care what them don't know God folk doing down there. I said, don't know God folk. That is a classic one-liner. One People that ain't saved, y'all are officially don't know God folk. That's from now on. Everybody that ain't saved, 
that we know ain't saved, y'all are, don't know God for. Don't know God for. Oh, I also like how they showed the reality that the way that how Karen's today husband is Twinkie's friend. That is how they got together. Him and Twinkie, I mean him and Twinkie, yeah, him and Twinkie, Drew and Twinkie were friends. And he was key in getting her to do the CD before last one that they did. He is the reason why that Twinkie done that CD. He funded it. He masterminded it. Karen wrote Blessing Highly Favored <coughs> that became a, a great hit off of that CD. All right. Another thing that I paid attention to in the movie, and we're going to get back to Denise's story because I have an eight-minute clip that I need to show you that really brings all of the interviews together minus the fourth one. And we're also going to get to hear where Denise apologized to them and also forgave them. Say, I forgive you what y'all done to me. Please forgive me of what I done to you. So we're going to see all of that. Another thing that happened, and I'm going to get back to the, let me finish the movie part. In the movie, another thing that I got from the movie is that Twinkie Clark's dreams weren't realized. She had really big musical dreams. And somehow or another, Maddie's dream for them to stay together and do what they did, and probably also her commitment to the Kojic Church, caused her not to realize all of her musical dreams. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know this or not, but those of us that are artists, musicians, and songwriters, we know that Twinkie Clark is a phenomenon. If you've listened to all of her music, her playing, and her singing, there are things that she was able to do with her voice, that nobody has been able to do. since I haven't heard no, I didn't hear, I thought Christina probably going to be able to, I didn't hear Christina be able to redo what she done. Even Karen, one of the greatest creations of Twinkie Clark is, is Karen Clark Sheard, vocally. This woman is amazing. She is clearly, and I see in this movie that Twinkie never realized her dreams that she followed managed dream and she followed the dreams for the church and she never lived for herself, even in choosing her husband, Johnny Terrell. Now, I have been able to speak to him a few times. And he's from North Carolina. When Twinkie left all of that, she came to North Carolina to Bishop Johnny Graves Church, who just recently died. Now, Bishop Johnny Graves Church was in Fayetteville. I think the, uh, before he died, it was in the Wisdom Salem, Greensboro area. Everybody knew that if you want to hear great singing, great organ playing, go go over there, and Twinkie would be over there. She would also visit Bible Way Church that was in Fayetteville. I used to preach there all the time. Um, and Twinkie had strong roots in North Carolina. So a lot of her story with her husband is like, rumored in the city now in the movie i see that they sort of adapted the rumors that we heard about twinkie and her husband and you know she got a son a son john john that's a whole section of the interview with denise you got to see that i think it's in part two or it's a part one might be in part one okay so um i don't know if he was whipping Twinkie's tail. But the way that they cast him in this movie, and I told you I got a problem where they cast Denise and where they cast him because I don't know if it's the truth. I don't know if they ran it by him. They couldn't have ran it by him because he looked like a whole nigga in this movie. A whole one. You push Matty down. I want to jump through that TV and jump on him. And then Twinkie, you walk out the door with him after you done push your mama down. That scene got me when they were crying. That, that really got me. I don't know if that's the truth. And remember I said there's this creative, you know, thing that producers and writers are allowed to do to stretch the story some to make it better for TV. And we're just going to believe that's one of those things because I haven't talked to Johnny Terrell about this, but he looked like a woman beater. So that is as it is. Now, in the recent years, those of you that are in North Carolina, you know that this is true. 
We've been saying twink it, come around again. <laughs> so although we know they busted up and she was Twinkie Clark Terrell for a little piece and then went back to Twinkie Clark, it looked like that he is back in her life. And her son, John John, I think is officially now out of jail, I think. All right? So that's that. <clears throat> so let's talk about these actors. Then I'm going to get back to Denise thing and I'm going to run this clip. I'll clip. Say it again. What clip? clip? It is. I, get, I sent that to you. No. So you're saying the only clip I sent is that one you just played? Yeah. Kendra. Mm -hmm. Look in the email. I sent that. That was the first email you I said, sent you. You said not to use that, remember? Oh, my God. Look in the email, Kendra. The email right after this one. You don't see? Nope. You're going too fast. You can't see. Scroll slow. Before, it was around about That's nine it. something. It was nine something. Go down. Nine something. Go down. It's down. Down again. Clips from Denise interviews. You see that? No, I didn't see that. You see that? I see it now. I keep trying to tell me I didn't do nothing. I know what I did. Now look and see how many minutes is that clip. Because we got to run that clip. I wanna how many? You, guys you do know they can hear that, right? Real you know they can hear that, right? Uh, no, okay, pause it, it. Pause it. Pause it. I didn't even click it. Okay, hit the X. Now put that put that in there, please. Okay, so bring the picture over all over the actor. Okay, so you can do that while I'm doing this. Right now, hold on. That Oh, that's matter right there to all the way to the left. So that is a junior name. I don't even know how to say this girl's name. Adjane <coughs> Ellis as Maddie. She is the standout actor in this movie. She done excellent. I I don't even know. I never heard of her prior to, to this. Have, did you know who she was prior? Yes. She played in that um the movie about the woman who kidnapped the girl and raised her as her own, but she was someone else's she was someone else's child. I can't remember the name of that movie, though. She raised it as her own, but she was somebody else's child. Okay. Yeah. I don't know about that. But the girl can act. So, the actual name. And then right beside her, of course, that's Karen Clark Sheard, the um, baby girl, my favorite BBW. Right beside. And she did good. I'm going to tell you, because Karen, <clears throat> in real life, she just opens her eyes real big and looks side to side, almost like, I don't know what's going on. And she doesn't have much of reaction. She she's very laid back and very nice. But then there are certain times she had she speaks out and has a reaction. And we really didn't see her react until at the funeral, which I need to talk about that next. Right beside her, she played Denise. That's Raven Goodwin. And beside her is Dodo Chalet Fraser. And beside her, oh, that's actually the um. Oh, that's, that's Jackie. She played Jackie. That's Angel Bridget. And then beside her, which I think is when it comes to who acted better than Maddie or just as good as she did. Not better, but just as good as she did. I'm so proud of Christina. Christina did wonderful. All of them were great, but Christina did wonderful. Let's talk about this funeral scene since we're talking about Karen. Now, if you are a real Clark sister fan, you already seen the real footage from this moment. Bring this picture over. This is a picture from that day. That is Denise walking away from the family car. And you see Karen looking over her shoulder like, what? <laughs> That's Karen over there, I think. What's that jacket? It's one of them. Back then, they were all looking just alike, like twins. Okay, now, she had apparently or allegedly made a spectacle at the funeral. She did get up there. She get up, did get up there with a praise on her lips, praise God. And you do see where she, she seems to be escorted away from the lectern. And she was being escorted to Karen. But then she pulled away from Karen and go the opposite way. That's still on YouTube right now. And I don't think she addressed that. In the interview, she only addressed about them not allowing her to be in the family car. I think that's what it was. Okay, so you'll see that in part one, two, and three. And I'm going to run four right after I get off here. Okay, 
Now let's run. There's something else I wanted to say. In this movie, there was no mention of Denise. There was mention of her alleged promiscuity, but we know from Denise in the interview that her baby was by a bishop. One of her babies was by a bishop. There was no mention of this in the movie. There was no mention that Denise was like many women we've had on this platform was in some way, shape, or form a victim of an older man's lust in the church that was taken advantage of. That's not even mentioned. Um, in the movie, they said that she had, that she, she was sort of flaunted having more than one boyfriend and been very sexually active. Um, that's interesting to me. I don't really like the way that she was portrayed in this, but I realize that it is probably Jackie's point of view of what happened. <clears throat> and that's that. Um, something else I wanted to say in the scene where Denise said, I wonder where that language came from, because in the scene, Denise said to Maddie, you gave yourself to everybody else and everything else. You never gave yourself to me. You gave me the scraps. So I, that's why I don't have nothing else to give you. Um, in the scene with Twinkie and Maddie, Twinkie said to her, you know, I want to go live my life. Maddie said to her, you should have your life submitted to God. And <laughs> the statement that she made back to her, which was so powerful, she said, all I do is please you. And she said, well, you should be pleasing God. She said, I don't know the difference. And that is really the space that a lot of churchgoers, followers of men and women of God and prophets and strong leaders, they don't know the difference. They don't know the difference between where God in and their leader in. You know, that's the whole thing. All right, so there's that. Um, then the other thing that I saw is in that conversation, I wonder where all that language came from. Was that the writer or did that come from something real? When Twinkie, Twinkie said, I need my mama. And then Maddie said, I need you too. She said, no. I need my mama. You need an organ player. That. I wonder where that come from. And I want to find out. And because I want to find out and I want to know, God is going to bring me the information to me to verify where that came from. And then I'll tell you guys when I, when I find out. I also like, and this was interesting to me. They actually showed what was rumored concerning Karen. Karen went to the hospital and said, this is something I want to do for myself. So now we officially know um, that she went for weight loss surgery or some kind of distribution, lap band bypass. And that's how she ended up almost dying with a 2% chance to live that she sang about 15 years later, which I can't blame her. You near about dead, about to wake up dead. <clears throat> I'll be telling that as my testimony as well. All right, back to Denise. And then I'm going to open up the lines. Make sure you got the number wrote down. I want to hear what you got to say concerning the movie. <sighs> but I meant what I said. It looked as though Maddie was ab abused and then she was also abusive. And as a result, that's, that is that controlling, abusive type thing comes out of Jackie and then to the rest of the family. Because the rest of the family do look like they're under the control of something or someone still and Maddie is gone. Um, anyway, so I showed, showed you the first video and how all of that played out and I text Dodo. She said what she said back. Um, I done two or three interviews. One of the things that she said in her interview was that Jackie was not a nurse, but then she explained herself that what she was saying is that Jackie was not a registered nurse. And that was one of the lies and deceptions that she didn't want to be a part of concerning the sisters. It was heartbreaking. I think it was around the second or third interview. She said, I'm not interested in being back in the Clark sisters. She just wanted a relationship with her sisters, but she wasn't interested in being a part of the, the Clark sisters. Um, I think 
that's what I remember. Watch this eight minute clip where it pours the whole Denise story and what she said. It pours it all together. Turn your devices up and listen very closely. I want to see you guys come back together. I want to see real conversations. You are beginning a real conversation. I know people say, oh, you've been mm -hmm. messy. Don't even pay that stuff no attention. You are telling your story. You've been I silent. Don't. I all, don't. They don't live my life. All these years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've been silent. And, we, and, and we're not taking no sides. We're listening to what you're saying. We're listening to what right. they have to say. I don't do deception. Hmm. I will not be a part of deceiving you. Let's go over to your sisters, let them introduce yourself, and then I'm, I got a few questions. Okay, um, I'm Twinkie Clark, of course, and that's my oldest sister, Jackie, and that's Dorinda. Dorinda's the evangelist, and Jackie's a nurse. And outside of the ministry, you know, they have other careers. How many degree? Okay. what kind of work do you do? I mean, vocation, what's your work? We know Jackie's a nurse. I think Dorinda, Twinkie, and all them full-time in ministry. What, what do you do? Well, wait, let me clear up one thing. Jackie is not a nurse. And I'm tired of hearing that lie, so I'm saying it, okay? Oh, um, wait a minute. She's not, she has not taken and passed her state board. Now, that's not to be critical of Jackie, but that's one of the deception things that I'm talking about. Oh, okay. I can't sing with people who don't lie. Um, even during my sickness, mm -hmm. it was like a connection there because, of course, she's um, she's been in the hospital medically. Medically, she is an RN mm -hmm. nurse. Ask Jackie herself. Has she ever passed her state boards when she would go to New York to take them? And she's taken them several times. Now, that's not to, to degrade my sister. that you are not licensed or degreed by because that's deception. You're deceiving people. Where Denise is, and of course, Twinkie wanted to be here tonight, but she couldn't come tonight. And of course, Denise, of course, we're coming back together. When Karen made that statement, I don't know, it was two, three, three years ago, I, I, I haven't heard from her yet. She still hasn't called. So if we're going to get the sisters together and come, and Denise is coming back and Twinkie's coming back, how come I ain't heard from them at all? When I say heard, I'm not talking about a, a leaving a voice message or not. I've not got text. I've not got voicemail. I've got none of this. My sisters have totally just pushed me away, like as if out of sight, out of mind. And we're leaving out one, Denise, we met her, she's been away from us for years. She's always been the spirit. She's always telling her, y'all ain't got no life. Y'all need to move. <laughs> Twinkie acts more like a sister to me than any of you all, but I don't feel no love from you, Jackie. I don't feel no love from you, Karen. I don't feel no love from you, Dorinda. Never have I been reached out to. Not by Karen, not by Jackie, not by Dorinda. Twinkie has, Twinkie has, and she says, we need Nisi in the group because Denise is the drive of the group. It's like a car. If you're missing the drive, then the, the drive column, how can you go anywhere? Uh -huh. um, and if I would, could put it in the expression of being a car, so I'm the driver. I'm the driver. I'm the driver. And yet, we are all up here singing about gospel. Do you know how that looks to the world? Thank you all for your support. Thank you for your prayers. And um, we're definitely in contact with our sister. And um, God's doing some things. So y'all just please just pray and quit talking so much. And let's just pray.
singing about gospel? Do you know how that looks to the world? I don't do deception. at the nervous say, a fifth Clark sister, excuse me. <laughs> so that's another thing that I felt, sisters, that you guys should have gotten clear. Now, I forgive you all, Karen, I forgive you, Twinkie, I forgive you, Dorenda, I forgive you, and Jackie, I forgive you, and you too, Leo, that's out here in California. Will you forgive me, Jackie? Will you forgive me, Leo? Will you forgive me, Twinkie? Will you forgive me, Dorinda? And will you forgive me, Karen? And all of y'all's husbands the same way. Children as well as cousins. So as we see by what Denise said in those part one, two, and three of interview, those are just clips, but there's so many other things she colored in there to make things clear. So along with the Clark System movie that you saw on tonight, and also the interviews from Denise will give you a better picture of the dynamic between these five sisters and as relates to their mom as well, called Denise gave us all of this. I did go to Denise and mention to her about doing an interview and she is thinking about it, I presume, from what I was told, that she is thinking about doing it. <clears throat> I normally hear directly from her, but as of lately, it's actually someone that's between us. So she may come back and paint in the those areas more. But part four, I kept, she done it a year ago. In three days from now, it'll be a year ago she done it with me. And I'm going to run it right after this live go off. Now, this is what I want to say. Every family has something that happens in their life. And we see this with the Clark sisters. What I hope will happen is that since we are getting to see, it, I think it's all beautiful. Even, you know, she's saying Jack is not a nurse, meaning an RN. Um, and seeing Karen's dynamic in this really is very interesting to me because I said from the beginning, I said this to Denise, you'll hear it. I said, Denise, I don't think Karen really knows everything that's going on. She's too young to know. And then she said, well, thinking back at things, yes, she probably is too young to really know how all of this stuff built up. So I really feel for Karen and for Kiara J. J. Drew. Um, also, I think that there is I, it's clear from watching what Larry Clark, which is Denise's son, who they are estranged last time I heard because she hadn't seen her grandkids in 14 years. The oldest one she never met. And she talked about that here on the show. And remember in that interview, she broke down crying. Um, so that is very interesting. There are layers upon layers of abuse. I want y'all to listen to what I said. Don't forget it. Maddie Moss was abused. And then she abused her children. And now there's abuse amongst and between them, even when it comes to some of them, their, their family. Not all of them, but it's there. And then some of the ladies, they abused themselves or didn't live for themselves and really lost their way when their mama left because she was so in control of their decision-making and of their life. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this to y'all black folk. Jesus is okay with you getting a pill and getting a counselor. And what they needed and possibly still need now was counseling because you cannot pray away the repercussions of abuse. You can't sing it away. You can't shout it away. You can't type and to rumor and give it away. You can't. You have to look at it eyeball to eyeball and deal with it. I would love to see for them to go and get some shock therapy with Iyanla. I mean, because she makes you look at it and pay attention to it, then go into therapy. In fact, they probably need to go straight to therapy. Iyanla might be too much. She might be too abrasive for, for them Right about now. All right, put the number down there. I want to get your reaction. First of all, if you love this platform, you're LRLA, 
and you love this platform, do not sign off tonight without doing something to show that you love this platform. You can do Cash App. You can go to the website to support this platform. We are a standalone organization, and we're able to do what we do because we ain't got an answer to nobody but Jesus. <laughs> that is the whole reason why that we're able to do what we do and ain't got to ain't got to rub no shoulders with nobody ain't got to rub no elbows or I can't talk about this one I can't talk about that one or I got to get in the bed with this one or that one to make things happen um I don't have to that's why today when Lifetime made a decision or somebody made a decision that they didn't want to interview with me they didn't bother me I understood I said I, I know my assignment what I'm called to do and it's difficult to be asked the hard question in front of thousands of people. Right now, there's about 13,000 of you on YouTube and Facebook and Periscope together. About 13,000 people watching live right now. And it would be difficult for some people to, to have certain conversations, so I understand. What I want you to do, call in right now. You got one minute. I want you to tell me your name and where you're calling from. And tell me what you thought of this movie. If it's a question or if it's a comment, it doesn't matter what it is. We're going to get into the conversation tonight. But I'm only going to do this for a few minutes because I'm going to sign off. And then part four of Denise Clark Bradford, I'm going to stream it live on this platform for you guys to watch tonight. But what am I doing tomorrow? When should I do it? Tonight? Y'all still up in the mirror. It's out in 45 minutes. All right, open up that line. Let's go. Let's go. Call it in in 1879. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, okay, hold on for a minute. I'm not seeing you come. Say again now. Hello, Harry. This is Danielle from Brooklyn, New York. How you doing? I'm doing good. Oh, you in Brooklyn, New York. How y'all doing with the Cora? Y'all shut down, ain't you? All right, baby, speak up. Talk loud. breakdown to me they didn't really show what Dorinda was talking about in regards to her wanting to commit suicide I thought that the way that they made Denise wasn't right and I was listening to all, all of the interviews that you did with Denise and none of that was really portrayed here and I think that if you if you really look at Denise's movie I mean her, her story and if it's told right you're going to have a rating goal the breakout stars in this in this movie to me was the lady that played Dr. Maddie Moss Clark, although I, I wish that they would have had her talk like Dr. Maddie Moss Clark, but that's neither here nor there, and the lady that played Frenchie. Absolutely. Thank you so much for calling in. Okay, we're having something going on wrong with the call. Yeah, but it won't, that ain't supposed to happen. That means it's coming. Something is wrong with the call. Let's try, try it again. Caller in and in 8193. What's your name? Where you calling from? I'm doing good, Kena. We having a few a technical difficulties. I think everything's overloaded, but I think they can hear. You. Speak up loud as you possibly can. All right, talk. Okay. Um, love the movie. Absolutely love the movie. I think that the way that they portrayed Denise was just Because we think we can pray it away, we can put some oil on it, 
and you don't, and, and we always think that if you're depressed, that means you just don't have faith in God. And I think as a, as black people, that we need to really get in the mindset that we can have therapy in Jesus too. Therapy and, and Jesus. This move, you know, this movie can, brings that out. I do wish that. I think it could have been at least an hour longer. Absolutely. There needs to be a part. There needs to be a part two, and it needs to be a part two where Denise's um, perspective is added in there. Since she basically, without yeah. Denise's storyline, this movie would have sucked. Yeah. Yeah. So we yes. need we need a movie yes. with yes. with yes. we need a part two. Well, take it to the big screen. And I, was, I and, and I would have loved to see marriage. Uh-huh. I would have loved to see that marriage and why that marriage failed. Yeah. That would have been nice. Yeah. Agree. Thanks so much for calling in. <laughs> Thank you. I hope y'all are able to hear things. We're having some technical Yeah. That made me It made me not want to do it. I don't like to do it when it's not right. Mm, I tr- I tr- can they hear anything? Yeah, they can. Okay, well, y'all just listen clear as possible. I'm going to take some more phone calls, then I'm going to go out and come back with part four. That's from a year ago. All right. Caller ending in 1907. You have one minute. Speak loud as possible. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. <laughs> Mary, this is Elder Solomon Brown calling from uh, Chicago, Illinois. And uh, I just want to say uh, the movie was okay. I'm not going to say it was great. And Larry, you got a full house tonight. Everybody's in this. We're here tonight watching you tonight. <laughs> yeah. You got a packed church house tonight. <laughs> I just want to say to the new LR Elders, you're welcome once, you're welcome twice. <laughs> you're welcome three times. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> They did make the beast look like the villain, even from the beginning of the movie. Like, it was no neutral ground with her. She was just combative with everybody. You know what I'm saying? So that's one part I hate about it. Then he had to be the Dodge dancer. I'm like, man! Like, they made her look like the villain in the movie. She act like the villain. Um, so I didn't necessarily like that part of the story because there was no nuance to her character. Um... And everybody, everybody saying, you know, Maddie Moss Clark was abusive, but she just looked like the average Pentecostal black mama to me. That's like, abusive, though. No. So you could be out like that. <laughs> she just looked like the average black mama. So, so y'all trying to say black mom, Pentecostal mamas are abusive? I want to say that. I would say they may be parentally aggressive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they don't want their kids ending up in the world. But I won't say she was abusive. That may be too, that may be too hard on Okay. Well, I I think so? I think across the board, I'm gonna say abusive. Now, for some of us, it wasn't abusive. It encouraged us. It made us better. It caused us to know God and live holy. But across the board, everybody can't take that kind of aggression in parenting, and it's not always good. That's just, and it could be my master's but degree in counseling talk. The Clark sisters. If she was passive aggressive, you think they would have became the Clark sisters or like the other members of Destiny Child? Absol- absolutely not. Absolutely not. I agree that, that <laughs> she she I made them. A little more Leo in the movie. We didn't see nothing about Leo. Um, yeah. And only two lies I want to point out in the movie was why was um, Bishop Drew Shear, why did he have all his hair in the movie? <laughs> you know, that was absolutely true. Ow. And why would Count Shear in the movie have the weight loss surgery while she was still big? So those was the two lies I pointed out. Other than that, it was it was okay. It was just okay. All right. Thank you so much for calling in. Y'all be blessed though. All right, you too. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right, it was funny. All right, I real I you guys, y'all gonna have to give me a y'all gonna have to excuse me. I can't I like doing stuff right. And this is irritating me. Should I keep on answering? Uh do you wanna do you wanna redo it? I and this I can't. It's, it's irritating to me. This sound is not right. Are, are y'all able to, if y'all able to hear, I take some more phone calls. Still, let me see. Mm. Well, a lot of folks, half the folks done dropped off. 
I think about four thousand, four three and a half thousand people left on um Facebook, and fifty four hundred left on um YouTube. They're calling them as they want to hear the call. You said it's we can hear. All right. So somebody's saying we can't hear. We can hear. All right. I take a few more. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Caller ending in thirty five thirty six. What's your name? Where you calling from? You got one minute. Speak loud. Okay. Hello. Hello, Larry. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. My name is Danny. I think that's what you said, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, the movie was okay. Um, I do think that they left out a lot of stuff. I think because of the fact that maybe it was, you know, the movie, they can't show everything in two and a half hours. It was already a long movie. So I chucked it up to that, but I do think that it was very one-sided. I think that the niece was the sacrificial lamb of the movie. Mm-hmm. I think that if it wasn't for her, you're right, it wouldn't have been much of no, nothing going on. I think that they told it from their perspective. I'll just say that. But am I totally gung-ho about the movie? No, I think that it, it left out a lot. I think everything that i seen in the movie, I already knew, like everything. Because mm-hmm. we done talked about it for the last past year and a half. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I definitely do think that the movie... It needs to be more, I think that, but you can't undo the first part. The first part is what sink the viewers in, and I think that it was okay. I think that, like I said, they aren't squeaky clean as they tried to portray. I'll just say that. So I do, I definitely do think that they left out a lot of stuff that mm-hmm. they didn't, that they just don't want to talk about, and that's okay. It it was what it was, and I yeah. think Kiara should have definitely didn't really hit some notes like her mama did. Oh no, it's good. <laughs> Good. She was good. I liked it. You know, it was alright. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so very much for giving us your perspective. All right. Now it it irritated me. Now um, but I think um, Kiara did really 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 good though. I think she did really did really good playing her mom. But no, she didn't hit like that. Is she? Oh, that hot. She didn't do that. All right. Another caller. Caller in an. Hi. Okay, you already know you on. Go ahead. On. <laughs> What's your name? Where you calling from? <laughs> this is Cynthia from Palace Springs. You know me. You invited me to the show. Oh yeah, I remember. Told- you came to the live show. Yeah. Yes. yes. I just want to say a couple of things real quick because I know one minute is going. Uh, number one, when she met with the uh, bishop's board and they wanted to uh, chastise her for speaking for her daughter. The way my patting is set up on the left hand side of God, I would have left and found me another denomination to sing with. Number one. Number two, I did not like the one dimensional way that they showed Denise just because of the conflict with what we've heard in the interviews last year from her. Because I rather would have seen the story about how they were fighting over J. Jude and all that. If you're going to tell it, tell the whole truth. Because yeah. there could have been some healing in that. Okay. And number three, overall, I liked it. I enjoyed it, but up and down my timeline, when they pushed Mother Maddie Moss Park down, mm. when he pushed her down on that um on that uh stairwell, honey hell would have been his whole point. Okay. <laughs> and up and down my Facebook timeline, everybody said from hell his ass would have been looking up. Okay. Yeah, I wanna know. I I wanna know. I'm gonna see if I, I think I got Terrell's number. Um, Elder Terrell. I think I got his number. I'm going to see if that's true or if that's something they added in there. He probably ain't going to tell me the truth, even if it is. I'm going to ask him. Thank you so much for calling in. You're welcome. And still enjoying your show, even after two years. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Hold on for a minute, Nancy. Let me see. There you go. Let me see if I can. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all call it messy, but I be needing to know. See if I can call him through Facebook. I don't know. We're going to see. I need him to tell me he didn't do that. He ain't asked him through Facebook. Not ask him through Facebook. Okay, he probably look. He must have did it. Did you get it? Then you get. <laughs> mm. 
You get to you push Manny Moss down them stairs. Y'all be shaming yourself moving twinkling way to North Carolina, but North Carolina, we thank you. But you ain't had no business doing that. Let's see if he can hit me. Maybe he might end up telling me he ain't into it. All right. All right, let's. T- no, I don't want to take no more call. This is irritating me. I'm so sorry. There are a whole bunch of you guys in here. How about this? <coughs> I come on Monday night at 7 o'clock. I'm going to open up the lines then. I have to load up part four so we can all watch part four of her. If you enjoy this platform so that we can stay right here, there are thousands of you, you can do $3. Support this platform right now before you get off. You can also go to LarryLive.com and click donate if you don't want to do it through Cash App. Or you can text the word donate or no, the word give. Yeah, 244-800-4530. Thank you so much for watching. Get ready to see part four, Denise in her own words. In her own words, part four. I'll see you later. Peace. Well, you ain't got time to get it all done. Bye! Real love. There ain't no else I wanna be. Yeah.